what do you think of this show? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this might be a good segue into the characters of this show and what we all think of them. Perhaps starting with oh boy. the main character himself, John Halo. John the, Halo. The, the Maester Chief. The robot John um, Halo. The, yes, the well, as we find out, no, he's not a robot. He's a human. <laughs> he's super. He's oh my god! god. Where do we or even? Is he? Maybe he is. Yeah. Where do you even start? Would you just like? When did everybody realize? Oh god, this isn't. This isn't him. <laughs> like Very when was that moment quickly. for you? He took the helmet off. Yeah, yeah, when he took the helmet off. I tell it, for me, it was when he started fun. sighing. I'm like, this is weird. That immediately <laughs> threw me off. You know what I mean? He's sit, like sorry. sitting in the ship with the artifact. He's just like. Ugh. Like, you're supposed to be, like, composed all the time. Like, I feel like that's a consistent trait well, with Master Chief in the games, you know what I mean? I guess it would be, uh, th this might be worth laying out as sort of almost like uh, the backstory, I guess, to point out the differences between the game and the show so that we understand where the show's at. So in the games and the books, now correct me if I'm wrong, but basically the Spartan program, it, it plays out, um... Master Chief is essentially like the most competent Spartan that came out of it. And the conditioning and the training that he went through essentially turned him into the character that we know who doesn't speak a lot. It's very calm and like oriented around achieving his objectives. Still compassionate for people though, which I know that the show, I, I imagine the show actually doesn't believe that to be the case in the games. Like he's basically a pretty reliable hero who will do the thing to save the day. Um, in this the, show, the important thing to oh, yeah. know about Master Chief and the thing that 343 has kind of been up with ever since they got the series is that Master Chief works better as a piece of a larger story, not the main focus of it himself. I because agree. If you look at Halo 2, I'm pretty sure there's like Master Chief has f like 14 or 15 lines of dialogue in Halo 2. Like, that's it. He don't talk a lot. He's, he um, he's speak much, much more at all. Oh, God, I he's more... wish he wouldn't talk so much. Yeah. I, I, well, I do too. He's very but, chatty in the show. This John Hayes yeah, is very, but that's very because chatty. they base the whole show around him, as opposed to like he's kind of our view into this larger conflict. Well, that's, um, yeah. So, because that's the way that it works in the games is essentially he's a blank, he's, he's basically a blank slate. He does have traits, but they're very like standard sort of hero traits. He saves people, he's composed, and he, he goes and fights super competent. But he's very much jacks like, him off, you know. Yeah, he's he's essentially just our vehicle, and and so a lot of the drama and the development stems from other characters like Cortana and Arbiter and 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 Keys and Johnson. Um, now you you can have him be more of an active participant in the story for sure. Um, but I would imagine that it might have informed their perspective on this is that you couldn't have had him be the way that he is in the game. You have to make these changes to make him character that is more involved in the story. I disagree. Um, but I guess, I guess it's, um, the, the change, the changes that they make to his backstory in this show, like the big change is that he has his memories removed of his childhood. Uh, so he doesn't know about the nature of the Spartan program. And he has an emotional suppressing pellet in his <laughs> spine and all of the Spartans do. And so when he removes that, he becomes a very different person, and I guess I might float this question by everybody. Given that he essentially has the same training, military training, is it not a little bit odd that as soon as he removes the pellet, he becomes a highly emotional, pretty erratic and unreliable soldier? It is. I, I think it's a, it's a good thing time i suppose to state the difference between what the show wanted to be and what the games presented him as maybe, sure. maybe that's a that's a good place to sort of begin why also, yeah yeah why don't you explain what, that all right so in the games master chief does have a personality he is not a complete blank slate he is generally as a way for the character to interact with the world in a sense that's the player character but the Master Chief does have a bit of a personality. He does care until, about the people. Are... Until yeah. Halo 4, he would never speak during gameplay. So, no, he didn't. He yeah, didn't Halo talk. 4 was very strange because he turns very a lot more chatty in that one all of a sudden. Uh, he's, 
he doesn't speak often. He is a man of action. He is paying attention to everything that's happening around them. If every once in a while, if he needs to ask a question, he will do that. He will explain himself when he's asked things. Um, he's not purely passive by any stretch of the imagination. He's just not a chatty person. He is very much a, a doer, uh, not a talker, but he's very observant. Uh, he will, he, he cares about the Marines around him. He cares about the well-being of humanity. He will reassure the, the, the friendlies that are with him, whether it's patting him on the shoulder or he, he knows that he is an inspiration. You, you get the feeling he knows that he is an inspirational figure. Uh, he is aware of this. He is not an idiot. Uh, he is not aloof. Um, he is observant. And there is a lot to work with in terms of using that as a character for a show. He doesn't have to be necessarily the only protagonist that would that might not work well in terms of a tv show um you could have him with someone else someone either a, a marine buddy or a maybe like or, uh rb or and the chief what? exactly <laughs> yes um wow, and we'll I... get in we'll get into the horrific odd lack of covenant in this halo show later yeah. but yeah there, there's plenty of room to take master chief as he is in the games uh, and have him be in the show to a very high degree as a doer and who can who has someone to interact with, not talking all the time and pouring out his feelings all the time and losing track of his emotions and well, not being so. able to handle things. What I wanted to highlight there is that a, a lot of talking about who Master Chief is in this show just is like, oh, he's not the same person, which he, he isn't the same he's person. Not the same person. It's more a question of does it even make sense, given his backstory in this series, that he is the person that he he is in this show? Yeah, because th this is uh, for for me, right? Because like, it again doesn't have to be the one from the game. But uh, to to go more specifically to the question you had originally, uh, uh, Fringy, with the the what should happen? What should we see happen if he removes an emotional inhibitor? And uh, this has been done in all kinds of media, loads of examples, be it technology or like, uh, like a chemical substance that was in there, or even mechanical for whatever kind of thing we're talking about, that something's removed in a robot that allows them to feel again. Also, I'm literally thinking about Futurama. There's a sort of way Bender in, gets indoctrination. Emotions. Indoctrination is not a pill. I'm sorry. So, well, so... Um, <laughs> what what are we what have we got? It's like a guy who went through all of the the military training that should lead to personality X, but he was also given an emotional inhibitor, which has led him to be almost robotic. But then he gets the inhibitor removed, and it's like an explosion of now. a switch is Why? flicked. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't like... feel like we got the military man anymore at all, and um, it it almost like overshadows any of that history. And they show us plenty of flashbacks of different things to imply a lot of that history. Um, and then you look at like. I forget his name, but um, you know his friend who left early on. Did 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 he mention anything about his chip? Did he take it out? Uh, I think he must have. I remember he mentioned yeah. that his memories come back to him at some point. He he mentioned that it took a while, but they came back. This is a little. I bit don't of think a... he mentions the chip, but he just sort of. Well, I, I guess we true. are oh, led to us. He does. He does? Okay, he does. okay. He says and, no, because he's talking about how like fruit tastes delicious when you don't have the chip or something. It it's was, important that to make a good soldier, you remove their sense of taste. The taste, very, yeah, very, which is very. Hey, strange. that's what happened to the writers. They also have no <laughs> sense of taste. Um, <laughs> hey, it's, it's, oh. so, yeah, because what I find interesting then is that like they make a big deal out of where it is and what it is, and Cortana, like the most advanced AI in history, is helping him specifically remove it. But two other characters just got rid of it casually. A thing that is designed to prevent you from. Having emotions override any particular decision you're making, which sounds like it's like so that's got to yes. be well integrated, right? Um, that's another problem with this. It's like he just pops it out with a fucking knife. It's like, oh, yeah. right yeah, there. Yeah, you and just you just fine. do it in the bathroom, just like you're flossing your teeth. And then, because well, I still remember that part quite well, where it's just like he's seeing like um, something musical happening, and he's like, my god, this is incredible. Like I am appreciating yeah, going down an dumbest, escalator. It that feels, was the dumbest. I was yeah. like, why is Master Chief at a Orchestra concert. What is this? He's experiencing the beauty like, of life. Well, yeah, that's what they were clearly going what? for. Was that he has <laughs> been he's been awoken now. He's no longer a robot, and and, and it's just like, damn. Does it, so? What was his personality before he yeah, got the emotional hard. inhibitor? Was he just like yeah. a big old party guy? I'm, I'm surprised they didn't have a scene of him like you know in a flower of 
or in a garden of flowers, and then he s steps down and picks a flower up, and he's like, <laughs> "Wow!" Sniffs it. This is so beautiful. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. It's turns into a nineteen twenties <laughs> cartoon, and all the flowers are dancing. And it's worth thinking about that. Him removing the pellet is not going to remove his memories of all of the stuff that he's had to do as a soldier for decades. You know, like that should be informing his history, well, but it's like it gets ignored completely. <laughs> If we can do yeah, an escalator shot. <laughs> I know, right? If we can do an easy to understand comparison from a series that, to be fair, hasn't even handled this character that well lately, um, Bucky in the MCU, mm -hmm. when he gets his yeah. conditioning removed, he doesn't become like the chill guy from Captain America One before he went to war. Like, no, no, you have to work all through the all stuff those he's feelings. been through is still there, and you can see well, that. Chief has I to think... work through like his history and all of the battles he's had to fight in and like just come to grips with i guess the grand nature of this this war that it seems like he's been an active participant in but hasn't really thought much about um it, but but we jump past all that because they're not interested in looking at that they want to jump to what i think is essentially the theme of this show um like and so and so they ignore that this character in this universe would have a history that frankly would make him a different person than what is presented in this show. Yeah, and then we the, get to... The, um, there's the difference here between in, in the show, Master Chief is a character who is stoic because that is his personality. He is not a, he's not a big game? talker that's... Yeah, 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 you're right. I'm sorry. Um, in the game, Master Chief is... He, he's stoic by nature. That's his personality. That is who he has grown to become... By the nature of what he has been raised to do and his life and where it has taken him and what he does for a living, essentially, he has become the way he has become naturally. Um, and it makes a lot of sense that he would be that way. He processes this just fine. He doesn't have this crazy internal conflict in his mind about, oh, but who am I? And da, 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 anything like that. That's who he is. And it makes sense that he has that personality. Whereas in the show, it's just, oh, he has a chip inside of him. Always thought it was low, weird that it was um, at the very bottom of the spine, way down there. When it's like an emotion, you think it'd be closer to the brain. Well, the how else are they, are they going to throw in a scene of him naked? You know, show off that ass. <laughs> He's good more than once. Um, yep. Yeah, uh, that's how I remember Master Chief is uh, butt ass naked and having conversations well, with people. Well, so essentially, I guess what I'm trying to highlight here is I consider this to be like a flaw within the show itself, that you have the Spartan program that is presented as being largely similar to what it was um, in the games. It's a program that is trying to create super soldiers from a very young age, um, conditioning, getting them to a place where they're going to be like your most competent soldiers. But the, the show seems to believe that like all of that training doesn't really amount to anything mentally. It's like the chip. This and removing the memories of the childhood that would create these people. It's precisely um, what so you like, um, described. Yeah. You, they, they took a big box, but they left some components behind um, from, from the source. And the, the, the confusions now come in. At, um, they try to almost argue, especially with Kai. It's like, this is just a normal girl. She's a normal girl. And what was preventing that was the in emotional inhibitor. It's like, oh, that's not at all what I expected for these lads. Like, with everything they've been through and trained up to be, from what this show's told me. Exactly. At this point, they have a history that would have turned them into a, a type of person. Not to say that removing the emotional inhibitor wouldn't have consequences for yeah, them. Yeah, of course. Um, well, the idea of an emotional inhibitor is just dumb to begin with. Um, I, I so this is the thing. I, I'm kind of like I agree and disagree, and 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 this is kind of like I'm already so in the same boat. Yeah. If you have, so I agree in the sense that an emotional inhibitor would be not necessary given what the Spartan program is, given what that program is and how it's designed, you would have naturally stoic, reserved, like duty-bound, um, you know, uh, like complying They're trained with to be that, yeah. Yeah, you would be trained to be that way. You wouldn't need an emotional inhibitor. That's kind of the nature of having such a rigorous program, an obviously unethical program, is that that's the end consequence. You don't need the inhibitor. However... <laughs> If you have these emotional inhibitors in this show, and they are essentially demonstrated to make you hyper competent mil in terms of military, you never like deviate from objectives. You're really calm. You don't make mistakes. Essentially, why aren't these given to everyone? Why why don't all the Marines have these so that they can switch it on and off in battle 
and then get in the zone and be like able to competently fight the Covenant? Why aren't they available to everybody? I'm trying to like get it, an image it, of the in his room while question. avoiding images of his ass. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's yeah, the best it's... part. It seems like it seems really lazy, almost uh, that. Oh, he's this way because they put a chip in him. Well, like, the oh, reason. Oh, well. So this is the thing. The show has a perspective. The show's perspective is that what makes you a Spartan is the emotional inhibitor in your back. Um, yeah. Like, and and that that is that is bad, right? So the show is making a statement, which is that like this is bad. Um, it removes a nest, you know, like an intrinsic aspect of you as a person that is. Uh, like valuable on a sort of cosmic scale. Um, problem yeah. is that Chief makes a lot of decisions throughout this show that because he didn't have the inhibitor cause a lot of negative consequences for people around him um, that get people killed, that nearly jeopardizes the entire fate of humanity. So like the statement that you're trying to make kind of contradicts the consequences <laughs> of Chief's actions. Are you still laughing about the butt? <laughs> no, I I'm laughing because... No, because what you're saying is really funny. Because they, they make such a big point of like him removing his inhibitor chip or whatever. But it's actually, it just makes him a shitter person. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I assume that's what part of what, what, uh, what Fring was leading to a little bit there was like, um, without these inhibitors, they become categorically worse at their jobs. Well, uh, Kai nearly dies because she can't, she can't PTSD. Find, like, she, she gets PTSD well, from I'll, that. Yeah. What Kai does is not nearly as bad as what Master Chief does, where because he took that inhibitor out, he is able to be easily, easily, easily manipulated, manipulated by yeah. a Covenant spy. Oh, I thought you were going to go which... with the fact that he gave up the whole mission to protect the... Oh, like there's so many, Mahler. I can't keep them straight. Well, yeah, because <laughs> he, makes a, he makes a lot of decisions um, that are just like the wrong decision. If, 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 if Chief's objectives are to save as many lives as possible, he makes a lot of choices that fly in the face of that goal. Um, and so you're kind of left to wonder. It's like, what are you trying to tell me? Because like Chief has just become a lot less reliable uh, in a way that's been detrimental to the lives of other people. Because the clearest example of this is like, yeah, he, he abandons the mission to try and save Kai, not recognizing that if the Covenant get the Keystone, they're one step closer to killing everybody, including Kai. Exactly. Um... um and and uh, this as to Rags's point, the um, the Covenant exactly. spy, like yeah, if he had his inhibitor up, I guess he would have been able to res resist her incredible advances. Like, by the way, no. she tried so hard. <laughs> Unfortunately, I reject the pleasures of the flesh. The glory of battle is eternal. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. well, unfortunately, you know, I guess Master Chief, Mackie, did you take out your horny pill? He did. Well, <laughs> I like how nobody even asked that. Like Halsey knows, but Parangoski doesn't know. Keys and doesn't there know. Are and there are red make, flags. Yeah everywhere or all, all over the place well i mean i mean i feel like the biggest one is he tried to kill halsey like twice <laughs> he, he, he totally did yeah. the second time the show likes to pretend that didn't happen though well, yeah because, which is and, why and, he used that as the uh the picture for the thumbnail it's such a it illustrates so perfectly everything that's wrong with the show i think it's quite well, poetic it's, it's um i i guess um this i um I don't know, this might be a more, this kind of leads into theme a bit, but I flat out think that it is a more boring choice to have Master Chief have his memories of his childhood removed and the emotional inhibitor in his chip, and then when he finds out the nature of the Spartan program, he's vehemently opposed to it. I find that that is a much shallower idea than having Chief be fully aware of what happened to him he knows that he was abducted as a child and put into a rigorous program and that a lot of his peers died in the process of augmentation. And, and, and then he, he knows that he doesn't have any like emotional suppressor thing in his back. He's become this person and he accepts what's happened to him as an overall good thing in the pursuit of a broader objective of saving humanity. I think that that's a lot more interesting thematically than what they chose to do in this show. Yeah. Especially considering how much of Halo 3's, not just in the game itself, but particularly marketing-wise, how it was very hopeful and inspiring uh, that, you know, this is the end of a trilogy, this is, the, the, the Master Chief has become this icon of, uh, of hope, of our willingness to, you know, fight and survive, 
And they had all this stuff that they could have pulled from that Bungie was very, very specific to make a part of their games, which I guess you wouldn't know if you didn't give about the games. This stuff exists. It's not like you had to the, the need to completely strip all that away from uh, the show or maybe it's not even stripping it away. They didn't even know it existed to put it in the show. You know, um, you get I don't that think they identified it as a potent thing. And the reason, because these are the reasons why I think that it's a more potent way to do it. It's interesting to think about if you have Master Chief and you're like, so you know what the Spartan 2 program was? And he says, yeah, but um, this is better for the overall, you know, humanity. It's interesting to think about, well, so he's cool with it, but I'm not, you know, because it's such an unethical, like, program. Um, he has this perspective. That's probably the most important part, but how much is it his perspective? How much is it just the consequence of him going through the training? Is this what John, like John, the, the person would feel, but does that even matter now if this is who he is and this is who he's become? And then, of course, you get into the discussion of like the concept of greater good and, um, and, and a hugely important aspect of that would be, well, how do the people who were robbed of their lives, how do they feel about it? Like, I think that there's a lot more interesting questions that you could uh, derive from that concept. And I think what they presented here is much simpler. And the reason why it's simpler is because it is in service of a perspective that they hold, um, which is that like that 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 what the Spartan program essentially like limits or removes from people is something that is uh, like innately valuable and ought not be uh, gotten rid of, which is a perspective that you can have. It gets a little complicated though when the 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 context of this story is an existential threat. To humanity that will spell the end of all humans um when it's you like have the a doctor strange thing where they they refuse to entertain the idea that maybe someone dying to save the multiverse is all right they totally do it in their own movie so that's why it's super dumb when like the the the, the, the prime example just being when when alt wander is getting attacked and doc strange's like yeah that's fine don't worry about it we've almost won <laughs> it's just like wait isn't the whole point that you're not supposed to okay um, I, I guess, does, what, is, what do people think about, uh, I guess, that as like a choice with our chief in the show versus in the game? I think you made a lot of great points, dude. I mean, this is, what, this is why I like Halo broadly as a franchise. I respect its themes. And what are the themes of Halo, right? To, to me, it's like uh, a, a Pandora's box story. Like, don't be, at least take caution when you're meddling with things that are beyond your comprehension. And then in addition to that, there's also the cost of humanity in trying to win an existential war, both on the collective level and the level of the individual, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, is it worth, is it right to rob Chief of all his humanity in order to make him a, an efficient killing machine that might actually see humanity through this war and defeating the Covenant? Mm. But... But what is the right thing for, like, the Covenant to win or humanity to win? And, like, this is why I, there's... Like, Damn, in the, why didn't you write the show? <laughs> <laughs> in the finale, there's, like, uh, the, the whole thing with Cortana completely yeah. overwriting uh, Chief, right? The execution of that is terrible. But mm -hmm. I actually like the thematic question that it poses, right? It's like, what mm. is Chief now? He's extremely efficient at killing aliens now like to the to like a robot level of efficiency where you can just calculate the trajectory and and movements of every alien around him and just kill them basically instantly that's like pretty much what happens in that last fight scene and is that the right thing so they can win or is that the wrong thing because an individual has been completely robbed of everything that makes him him i like i like those questions i just didn't like the execution oh yeah I I would say that I like that question as well, but yeah, I agree. Not Well, I guess this is what I would say. I would not only agree that the execution is flawed, but I also think that the show kind of needs to put up a compelling counter-argument. Um, yes. But I think mm -hmm. the show has the perspective that, like... That, and this, this is kind of funny to me, because the show has the perspective that Halsey is evil, which is obviously different from the games. The games are more like, Halsey's complicated. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, that's a great evil. point. Yeah. Well, she's, she's a bad bitch, dude. She's an outright like, villain yeah. in this show. <laughs> she's what, the so, villain, yeah. 
the the thing about Halsey, and then I think we should hear from ER because I want to hear more of his perspective mm-hmm. after this. Mm-hmm. But but Halsey, this is one of my main problems. She doesn't feel like she does in the games, and in the games, especially in Reach, she's like she gives the impression, okay, yeah, this is a woman who could totally control a bunch of super big badass beefy guys and dudes right she's like Mm -hmm. are you a puppet or a spartan you know she's she's like putting them in their place while she's behind a glass wall hiding but she's just like she's just an older woman but you get this like motherly vibe from her where it's like like she will lay down the law and they will all follow it you know what i mean Mm -hmm. right right and I don't you get, get that impression. You respect her in the in the games. She has this efficiency and pragmatism and sternness to her that's backed up by someone who is intelligent. Here's something that's important to consider. I replayed Reach yesterday, and um, the final line of Reach, uh, the final scene, is Halsey basically exalting Noble Six um, for like his sacrifice, and she actually is sad that he didn't get to live to see humanity win. Because uh, in Halsey cares about the Spartans. They're not just um, like you don't tools. Get, yeah, you don't tools. get that Im- impression in the show. They mainly oh, save that oof. for her feelings for her, her daughter, and that's about it. But here's here's the awkward part, though. I don't. So in the games, the Spartan program, or I guess in the books, the Spartan program was not created to stop the Covenant. The, the Spartan program was created to quell insurgencies. Um, it just so happened that the Covenant attacked when the program was completing, and so that just became the heel turn. And it's something that's kind of acknowledged as like, well, nobody really cares about the Spartan program anymore, like what it was and how unethical it was because it achieved this goal, even though it wasn't the goal intended. So like in the show, though, I don't know if the Spartan program was created to quell insurgencies or if it was created to stop the Covenant. Because if it was created to stop the Covenant, it's like, huh, like... The Spartan program in the original law is like a, a hell of a lot more unethical in and of itself as a program. Um, but we, we don't know in the show, though. Like, it's unclear. Um, and, and so it's like a little bit more awkward to make Halsey more evil when like the context that it arose in is much more ambiguous and maybe even be the context of stopping the Covenant. Um I, I have no idea, though. I don't know. I think like, it's yeah. implied in the first episode that he was made to go after insurgents, though, such okay. as Quan Ha's Ma, who Th- he was sad, killed. Yeah. That's true. Um, I guess. I guess it's hard, it's hard to, to tell because the Covenant are there too. So, well, and they don't believe the Covenant exists as well, remember? So, yeah, we, we, yeah which we is, were confused for a while. Mind. I well, thought it was I mean, UNSC propaganda. <laughs> that, yeah, that was. Oh, what? Yeah, that's dumb. <laughs> that's dumb. There are some yeah. things. It's it's like the unbelievable. Yes, the, the UNSC propaganda of we. There isn't actually an alien race who's destroying planets and killing untold millions of human beings. No, no, no. And there certainly in the future is not like photographic evidence of this. No, well, no, no. It's just <laughs> UNSC propaganda. Yeah. <laughs> Quan says you can doctor video, and that's oh that's well, her. that takes care of that. Oh. Yeah. So here's, why believe anything then? <laughs> like, <laughs> now, uh, allow that. me to go back to my dirt farm. <laughs> here's something a little bit awkward though. She's got to believe in, her dad being skewered right in front of her. Yeah, there you go. Wow, well, no, that was that was UNSC well. propaganda. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that a hologram. Yeah. It's here's like it was chief in a in a meat suit. When her episode, her dad's like the the insurgents. They say, "Oh, the UNSC is like spread thin. They're pulling out." It's like, oh. Can you not connect the dots as to why that might be the case? Why else would they be spread thin? What else would they be dealing with if not the aliens? They don't have communication you know? though with like other planets and in a network of well, anything they, beyond. They've got television. There's right? just no like, way that the Covenant have just... been active for this long and that here's, they're not believing it. Here's the big problem, Walla. Madrigal exports a lot of material to other planets. They have a lot of material that they export to other planets. So if multiple planets have been glassed. Uh, did they not believe the people UNSC who UNSC propaganda, say, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, hey, man, I mean, I, some people still believe the Earth is flat. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah, but, <true. laughs> but not flat. a whole no, planet's no, this, worth. This planet was always like that. It was always like that. Also, the planet it's, being around is UNSC propaganda, okay? <laughs> 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 <Blow> yeah. tards. <laughs> I don't... Uh, that's a whole other problem. Um, I suppose uh, the thing with, like, 
chief as well that might be worth delving into is that um the show seems to believe that there is something like the whole connection to the forerunners that he has that's unique to him which is dude you guys have no idea like how many problems this causes but it seems to present that like that aspect alone has an effect on him that exists beyond the emotionally suppressing uh, which i guess is worth saying those pellets don't work because like chief gets very he screams what am i while he's still got the pellet in his back and you can be like well that's because he touched the keystone but vanek and riz also in like episode nine while they still have the pellets in their back go all like oh i don't know like oh i don't like this so those it makes pellets you wonder, don't work yeah it makes you wonder what the pellet does exactly and it's hard to take it seriously because they pop it out like it's a tic tac under the skin it's just like that yes i don't i, I like Chief wedges a knife into his spine. It's like, man, that seems uh, the most unsafe procedure ever. <laughs> it's controlling your emotions. You'd be like, hey, whatever. If hey, I tug on this thing, I might kill myself. Yeah. We need to be fair. Cortana was sort of telling him where to stab himself. That was yeah, she, really that terrible. Now, Kai, di Kai like, didn't have this. She's just a better surgeon in general. She saw his ass uh, when he was doing it. She knew where to poke. Oh, you know, yeah. he he could have been wearing underwear in that scene. By the way, I like, wish it, it, No, not no, no. <laughs> I wish it were recorded, but uh when me Frank You and wanted Rex to see his ass, didn't you? We're uh, watching that scene. When it cut to Kai just staring at it, I think we burst out laughing for like twenty <laughs> seconds straight. <laughs> that just... was really funny. <laughs> Yeah. So, no, why was she in there staring at him? I don't know. <laughs> because if you, as long as your Spartans hmm. have chips in their backs, you can have co-ed showers, and it saves on storage. No, I, I more so. I assume what you're talking about motivate. Like she was like, I can't wait to go see him naked, and then she sees all that happen, and she's like, Whoa, yeah, that. Oh, okay. Not, <laughs> she's out in there. Hmm. Do this, you know, when like, because uh, why would she do this? She has the pellet in her back. You yeah. know. I love what that? you guys pointed out about the pellet before. Like, Rags, you were saying, uh, why isn't it closer to the brain? Which I thought the same thing. And then Actman, you said, uh, well, we need an excuse to see his ass, right? <laughs> exactly. I'm just, it's so funny to me that that's what came first for them in the writer's room. It's like, we got to show the audience Chief's <gasps> juicy ass. How do we do that? Well, look, okay, look, yeah. if, if one of you guys had said it's going to be in the base of his spine, I'd be like, oh, because it's intertwined with his spine. And uh, like, and that's that's in some way a, a core area that's going to spread through the whole body in some way, like, right? And it's like, no, it's just uh -huh. there. No, it is directly <laughs> north of the cheeks. <laughs> yeah. It's not and even I guess uh, the brain, yeah. Thing. Yeah, Holes I think uh, the big oh, the big part of what I don't like about the show is this might be somewhat controversial, but <laughs> I feel like the story beats it has could have worked. The idea of John regaining a bunch of emotions and kind of being unhinged that's something that could potentially, potentially. work, and like yeah. even even a love story, but that has to be way down the line because we never got to know chief as a master talent chief. if you're gonna do that yes you need yeah to, you know you need to be able to illustrate the difference between the changes how does he go through the change without everyone going what the f wrong with you you're <laughs> yep. turning your gun and your badge you're out of line um also Whoa. we're gonna check you to see if your chip is still there oh my That's god it's not. clearly not <laughs> Hello, you just listened to a segment of the podcast Every Frame of Pause, or EFAP, hosted by YouTubers Mahler, Rags, and Fringy, and joined by a cycling variety of guests across the internet. They critically analyze media with exhaustive detail while pausing at every single frame. Subscribe to the EFAP channel and catch new episodes on Saturdays, as well as catch their smaller videos reacting to the latest and not-so-greatest movies and TV shows throughout the week. You can also subscribe here to EFAP highlights for the latest shorts, clips, and supercuts also up uploaded throughout the week. Links to all the relevant channels can be found in the description section below, as well as links to their communities on Reddit and Discord. Thanks for watching.